life prior to August 4th, 2005, like everybody else in the country, normal life, three kids, a lot of running around. Cheryl was starting to have some issues with some, some headaches. So the first doctor, her primary care physician, said it was vision, reading glasses, go get reading glasses. So a lot of it made sense, but the reading glasses, Cheryl at first I thought, believed that they had helped, but then the more severe headaches came back. Probably six, eight months into that process, I said, you gotta go back to the doctor. So back to the doctor she goes, and that's where the doctor kind of held her hand and said, you know, you got a lot going on. <clears throat> back to work full time, the stress of a job, three kids, all the events and that stuff. And that's when she said to Cheryl, you know, exercise or yoga classes, meditation, something like that. I had no idea what an aneurysm was at that point. Never heard of it. You know, everyone is different. Everyone's outcome is different. Everyone's initial rupture is different. You know, I've heard stories about people that ruptured and were home in a matter of days. And, Cheryl's, well, August 4th, and she got out of the hospital, I think it was April 7th, if I remember the date right. So you know, whatever that is, 245 days in, 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 in the hospital. And there was one nurse in the ICU down at um, Rhode Island Hospital that could see me coming in after the first couple of days and trying to figure things out. And she sat me down and she said, I'll never forget it. She said, clear your calendar from now until January. And this was in, in August and I was like, what? And, that, and that's when it started to, to set in that this is going to be a big deal. The expense of all of that, all of a sudden, unplanned events, you know, um, and getting care here, figuring out how to continue on my full-time job with taking care of Cheryl here at home full-time. Thankfully, I worked for a wonderful company that was very accommodating when it, when it needed to be. The doctor's appointments, I can't tell you how many, 14 years later, I bet she's got 30 or 40 doctor's appointments a year. You know, that you have to get scheduled for, get planned for, different test results, you gotta, you know, tests that have to be done. I jokingly with Cheryl, I tell her, I said, I, I could probably be a doctor right now with some of the stuff I've learned through the Brain Aneurysm Foundation. If they didn't exist, I don't know how I would have handled it because I just started getting more information through them and guidance on what questions to ask the doctors and nurses about the process. So as I've learned, and as a lot of folks have learned as they get engaged with the um, Brain Aneurysm Foundation is, how do we get that word out? How do we get, how do we get that, that awareness out there? How how do we avoid more folks going to their doctor with severe headaches and being told to get eyeglasses and do yoga? Anything we can do so that other people don't have to do this. We take the trip down to DC every year. We, we love your boss's support on Ellie's Law, HR um, 594. So we get involved in that. There's no reason other people should have to go through this. It's a lifelong journey that just enters many, many, many different phases as, as, as you go on. You understand them as best you can, you adapt and you know, you move forward.